So, hello again. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Monica. I'm from Geeks of Go Go. Um, I'm here today to the, do some updates on my Doc Ock cosplay build. Um, sorry about the interruption with that whole deal with my sound not working. I seem to always be having issues with it for some weird reason. But if you can't hear me, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm more than happy to adjust my sound. I think so far after I tested it, it seems to be working just fine now. But we'll find out later, I guess. Hopefully. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. And I'm really excited because I... I have been doing a lot of organizing and storing a bunch of my stuff around my uh, my space here. And I kind of wanted to give you a sneak peek of it because not sponsored by any means, but um, Joanne's is actually having a sale right now for storage and I took advantage of it. And my gosh, like my space has like completely transformed. Um, so... I do have this pegboard here that I've painted over the summer and never had a chance to put up. Um, my health and schedule just got in the way and now it's finally up. I painted it purple because it's my favorite color and I'm wearing it today. Um, and I try to be as color coordinated as possible. So a lot of the stuff that you'll see around my space is a little bit on the purple side, purple or blue or like Upstairs in my sewing area, I have teal colors there. And it's kind of like my favorite color scheme right there. Like the whole teal, um, blue, and purple kind of like um, color schemes. Nice and cool, but also still bright and packs like a lot of punch with like the colors. And it's like very happy colors. So um, I'm going to talk about storage, how I organize my things around um, here. Um, how I've been working on organizing that stuff, what kind of receptacles or storage containers that I use, and finally, like a bit of an update on my Doc Ock cosplay. But yeah, um, first of all, so on the first stream, I actually created this live on Tinkercad. So if you are able to watch the first stream, if you know how I made this, um, I made the file out of Tinkercad. It was really easy to do. They do have some pre-made um, stuff or shapes that you can use in order to be able to like create like anything that you like. And I've created this and my husband 3D printed it for me after I shared my file and he printed two, which is awesome. Um, there was a little bit of a dud when it came to the size of the... Um, the tubing that I got. So at first I had a four inch tubing and what ended up happening was, let's see here. I'm going to grab the right size because the wrong one is in the car and I'm going to be returning it soon. So let me grab this real quick. So this is actually air duct tubing. <laughs> I just booped myself. So this is air duct tubing that I'm going to be using for the tentacles. And basically it mimics the look and appearance of the Doc Ock tentacles that Olivia Octavius has in, um, in the pictures. And the idea is I'm going to stretch this out. And luckily during the summer, I bought a ton of these pool noodles. Um, so the idea is basically once these are stretched out, they're going to be cut in half first off. After they're cut in half, these are going to go in. And then also, so it looks like it's illuminated. I'm not sure if you can see it in camera here. But I'm also going to put this bar inside. And that will help stabilize the whole thing. So I'm going to put this in here then bend it and then the idea is to have this really long tentacle just like hanging out on my back and like going up front um, now these metal bars that I'm using they're actually very sturdy I love using these because I've used this for a lot of my props 
and I just bought them from um, hardware stores, you know, Menards mostly because they have really good pricing. I think they run about five to twelve dollars per per aluminum bar, and they're really sturdy. You know who else uses these? Is um, Adam Savage use them? Um, I was talking to him at Awesome Con last year. Um, I had I had a panel at Awesome Con, and I decided that since I was waiting for my panel to happen, I decided to do a detour and stop by his booth and like say hi and like um, get uh, one of those meet and greets with him because he's an absolutely amazing creator and I absolutely am a huge fan of him. So. Um, they say that right? I am a huge fan of, yeah, I am a huge fan of his. But yeah, so the idea is you got your green, you got your clear. Um, this is kind of like ideal if you don't want to dabble with electronics on this one. I'm just going to put my water over here. If you don't want to dabble with electronics, but I actually am going to be dabbling with electronics with this because I'm crazy. Um, this will do just fine with the bars and everything. I'll, and then just attach it to the, the backpack, um, so to speak. You know, the whatever like holds it. And look at this. This is like the perfect fit. There you go. How perfect is that? That is like the best fit ever. So it fits just right. I know there's a bit of slack in here, but if you remember on my first uh, video if you were able to watch it I did account for the sizing of the inside of it to be a little loose because I want to be able to cut notches in here and be able to just um, put another thing with like a stopper that way this won't keep moving when I'm moving around this won't keep doing this so to speak um, and this whole thing will just like hold itself um, now, as far as a pool noodle is concerned, I'm not going to put the whole pool noodle in here. These will be actually cut into segments, probably about like two, two inch segments. And then I'm going to run one, two, three, four um, holes in it. And the holes will have aquarium tubing. I know it sounds really complicated, but trust me, it's going to look great. And then the aquarium tubing i'm going to line up um i'll be lining up led lights so that's the tricky part i'm still trying to figure out how i'm going to do it and how i'm going to get away with it but we'll see um so yeah so gotta remove these sticky things here but yeah definitely definitely loving how this is looking so yeah you got your tentacle there and then I've got my things and the cool part and I was really hoping they had this in store while I was looking for storage I was looking for these trays so these are paint trays these things that I'm holding up they're actually paint trays I got from the dollar store and they are so perfect so the reason why I like these so much is I can just, they're cheap, first of all. They're like a dollar per, per tray. So I'm going to double up these trays to like add some, you know, rigidity and look like very nice and like hardy, you know, like sturdy. Now they do have these feet, which I'm going to cut off later. So I'll just look at the demarcation lines here and then cut off these, these feet. Um... And then after that, um, glue two of them together. And I bought four. So what's going to happen is they are going to look like this, basically. All four of them are going to look like this. So this will be sitting on my back. So originally, I wanted it to go like this so that it looked like kind of like a square. Um, but you know what? I think it might look a little better if I did it like slanting. So it's like really sitting on my back. So I'm going to put them together like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a really thick Velcro and attach. Well, first off the back, I'm going to have like this really thick 
Velcro that's going to go over here and that attaches to like part of like a vest looking thing in my back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that way I can easily like take it up on and off. And then um, I'm trying to think. So as far as the, um, the holes are concerned, I can just easily drill holes with a rotary tool. And luckily I'm pretty sure I can fit four of these like circles in here. So let me, let me try that real quick here. Yeah, I think there's enough space for four. It's a little tight, but that's fine. You know, I just want to make sure this whole thing is nice and sturdy. And I want to make sure that I'll be able to carry it on my back, no problem. All right. So there's that. It's pretty cool. So I am going to make a lot of progress now that I have all of my materials, which is pretty cool. Um, and let me put this aside real quick here because I'm going to talk to you about storage now. So with storage, you know, there's a lot of steps that I do or that I did when I was doing my storage for my workshop. So the first thing that I ended up doing was grouping similar items together. So what does that mean? So basically I had, <laughs> there's so much stuff in this, this whole like space that I have here. Um, basically, you know, if you see like similar items would be all the different types of glue that you use. So I have my glue sticks, my wood glue, my um, white glue, which is like Elmer's glue, Mod Podge, stuff like that. They're all in one space. Um, if I have something that is for tying things like zip ties, wires, twine, shoelace, anything of that nature, they go into one bin. Um, acrylic paints, no matter what the size they are, they all go in the same spot as well. Um, and also, you know, just, just go and goes to show like, you know, it's so easy to find stuff that you associate each other um, with, or like the two things like associate each other, I guess for lack of a better word. And then, you know, just, just put them in the same spot and it will be so much easier to find. Um, next is you arrange stuff by height. So I love arranging stuff by height. If you look at this area here, um, so that's a lot of that is Bondo, uh, sorry, not Bondo, Flex Bond, which I use to coat my foam armor and give them this really nice finish before I like start painting uh, with acrylic or airbrush, it actually gives it a really nice canvas after I heat seal my foam. And then, you know, I apply that to like give it this really nice and smooth surface to prepare me for painting. Um, and the same goes with like the tools. If you can see the tools on my wall, like it's mostly organized. <laughs> it's organized by type. So, you know, like all my cutting materials are, are on this left side here. I got my scissors, my rotary tool, my my cutting, you know, my, my blades. They're all on the same side here. So anything that, that has to do with cutting is all in here. And then anything that has to do with heat, all the heat items, like my glue gun is over here and my heat gun is over here. Uh, I still need to figure out what to do with my airbrush gun because... That stuff is not cheap. Um, I hate for it to like keep falling off or whatever. So I might figure something out or I might create my own holder by designing something in the 3D printer or in Tinkercad. Might be something that I'll share and then I'll I'll like put it up there on um, on the website for people to download. So that can be a possibility. But yeah, I have those in there um, in this corner here. So you will see a bunch of stuff that I use for painting and for writing. So they kind of have that similarity in there. So you have, you know, I have my paintbrushes and my Sharpies that I use and popsicle sticks, um, my plastic cups because they're disposable. I can just throw them out once I'm done with them, right? After painting and to go with the whole cutting, um, cutting section, I have like stuff that carves foam 
and leather and whatever it is that I need to carve, they're all on one space over there as well. So yeah, so I have all of those in place. Um, right below my um, compressor for my airbrush, right below it, I have my airbrush cleaner. Now, oddly enough, I do have my barge cement there, but that that's why it's right beside the, the flex bond because those are all both for my foam making stuff. Um, so there's that. Okay, so moving on. Um, after you arrange stuff by group stuff by similar items, you arrange them by height. So um, it's easier to like notice. Um, small ones go up front and then the tallest one go to the back so you can easily see your items. Um, I love doing that a lot um, because I do tend to have a lot of small items that get mixed into like all this like other stuff, you know? All right, so after that, you measure the size. Um, so what do you need to measure the size for? You basically measure the size so that you can figure out what type of containers you buy. Now, these containers that I have here, I actually bought this at the dollar store. And these come in so much handy when I have like these like miscellaneous like small items that I want to put away. Um, I'm going to show you my hardware. Um, this is my hardware bin. And I work with a lot of hardware. So this is it right here. This huge box. And I got this box from Joanne. Again, not sponsored, but, <laughs> you know, just showing you all because this is really nifty. So it's a box, like a bunch of boxes within a box, but there's a reason for it. So... I determine the sizes of the stuff that I'm about to store and get receptacles that would house them. So screws, I got to have, you know, if I know I have a lot of small items, I need something like this. Kind of looks like a tackle box or a toolbox, right? So that comes in handy and then everything else that's like larger, they can just go into the bin here and I don't have to worry about it so much. Um, I do use a lot of hardware a lot. But I already said that. But yeah, like this is this is like my hardware um bin right here. This really heavy thing here. So it has everything from nuts and bolts to L brackets to what else do I have in here? Washers and L bracers. But yeah, um, which brings us to the next part. Label your containers. So um, I label my containers right after I put the stuff in them so I won't forget what's in them. <laughs> so yeah, I love putting the labels in there. I try to be as specific as I can because that way I won't lose stuff. And that way if somebody else needs to grab stuff from here, then they'll know where to find it. Um, my husband really likes it when I label all of my things because when we're traveling, and we have a trip and I need to like bring certain materials with me for backup, then it's nice to have like everything labeled so he can create like a small tackle box to bring with us at conventions, which comes in really handy for repairs or if there's like an emergency or if someone else needs help. We love helping cosplayers while we're out in shows. Um, like we always carry extra glue sticks or a glue gun, some, some, something like that. Um, and then they either stop by, uh, get a hold of me, and stop by. If I have a booth, they'll stop over there, and then they'll, they'll you know, ask me about, you know, if they can have this, like, repair kit or borrow my repair kit. So there's that. Let's see here. Oh, so, yeah. So here's another thing, and I don't know if it's just me being OCD, but another thing that I like about storage is I tend to color coordinate stuff. So earlier I did mention that I love having a color scheme around my space. So it's mostly in here, it's mostly purples and blues, like lavender, greens, you know, stuff like that. Upstairs is a little bit more on teal and maybe a little bit of lavender, maybe a little bit of like, you know, um, um, yeah, like violet or something like that, but it's mostly like on the teal side. And then everything down here is kind of like bolder colors. Um, I also tend to um, just 
remember what's in the bin if I remember what color it is. So sometimes if it's like, I know that my glue sticks and stuff like that, they're on the blue bin. So that helps me out a lot. And then my pins and Velcros are on the pink bin. So that, oh wait, that's my, my big head. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of like my thing. Like I, I know, like I associate it with color. So then I'll remember, you know, oh, where did I put this? Oh yeah, that's right. It's in the pink bin or it's in the blue bin. If it's similar bins, the labels will help out with that. But yeah, color coding just like really helps out a lot. Um, this one is also for size. Like this one, I got this for $20 at Joann's, which is really good price. This was actually originally $60 and it's freaking ginormous. So I'm actually going to move all of my electronic stuff in here. Um, you know, my LED lights, my wires, my soldering um, iron, um, my soldering wire and stuff like that. Uh, my resistors, they're all going to go in there. My Arduino, you know, my, um, what else do I have in there? I have a bunch of stuff. And they're like, right now, they're scattered into like three boxes above me. So if I tilt this camera over here, like up there is still not very organized up there but yeah so so that's that's how it's looking so far right now all right and then what else let's see here place containers of the similar items together so that's another thing that i love to do so basically what i do after i label them put them in their containers anything that has a similar theme they go on the same space so I think I mentioned that earlier with the FlexBond stuff um, because it's all foam related stuff that I use often. So in here, behind me here, behind this pretty wig head that I've been working on, um, my glue sticks are up here and the Velcro and fasteners are over here. And then I have um, more glue over there. So they all kind of like go together. They're all adhesives. So all the adhesives are on one spot. Okay, um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, place items that I use often in close proximity. So the reason why this is all here in front of me is because these are most of the stuff that I use really often. Like I, like 80% of the time, these are the materials that I need to like complete my work. So I have my, my heat cutter, my Dremel or my rotary machine, um, the bits for the rotary cutter, glue gun, airbrush, everything that's in here is easily within reach. Like it's not enclosing containers. And I know it doesn't look the tidiest, but you know what? It's like, it's so easy for me to just grab it while I'm working and it makes it so much easier for me. Um, let's see. Yeah, place the least used items the farthest and also like take account safety as well. So a lot of my electronic stuff, I tend to like put them up here. So my batteries, you know, like all the soldering stuff, it's all up there. Um, I tend to work with them um, during, you know, like while making cosplay, but I don't necessarily want them lying around. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just easier and safer for them to be up there. And that way they won't break easily. And I try to keep kind of like a large walking path for me around this space. And the reason for that is not just a safety reason, because if I'm working with big props, it's a lot less likely for me to knock something over rather than, you know, like <laughs> just be safe and just be able to just like move around here easily. That's another reason for it. Um, yeah, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. Like definitely safety first. Like think about safety when you're putting stuff away. Um, I like also like arranging stuff aesthetically. It just kind of like just makes it like your own space. Basically, it's like it's not just putting stuff where it's supposed to be put. But also, like, keeping in mind that, you know, you know, your stuff can be aesthetically pleasing. Like, I tend to, like, pick 
that small glue gun that you see over here I actually just got that today at the store while I was getting more storage for my workshop because it just matches my space and guaranteed if I go to a convention and if I see somebody else using that it's either we were at the same store at the same time which is very unlikely or they borrowed it and never returned it so <laughs> those are <laughs> another indications but but yeah okay so let's see if i can cut this thing now so i have this tube i ordered it from amazon i will be sharing links to this when i do my final like blog post about you know this whole thing um the whole build process and then i'll be able to whoops yep I'll put the links to all the materials that I'll be using today as much as I can. Because some of this stuff is left over from stuff that I built from the past. But for the most part, you know, it's it's all like attainable. Like everything's available online now. And just to be on the safe side too, it's like, you know, might as well stay inside as much as you can and have stuff delivered over. Um, this virus has gone too long for us already like we're, we're just so sick of it now what i'm doing right now is i'm just trying to find the middle part of this tube so i ended up putting a clothespin right in the middle um right in both ends here and i'm actually going to need a second tube um and then what i do is i stretch it out so i stretch out the one end let me see here and then try to locate the middle part. So I'm trying to see. Okay, it's right here. Now let's see if this actually works because supposedly this material is puncture proof. So I don't know if I purposely like cut through it, if it actually is going to be um, cut in half. So here we go. Let's try this out. Oh, I was able to cut it. All right. I mean, technically, I don't really need it to be an equal size because in the end, I'm going to have like two different, um, all of them, I want it to be different size because they're going to be post all different. All right. Now I need like wire cutters. I don't have them here. I think that's a wire stripper. And that's so let me see there's something in here let me try this I don't think that's gonna do it this might be something I'm gonna need a special tool for because it does not seem to be doing the trick here um yeah i might need to go to the tool room downstairs and just go grab it i think it's in the living room i don't know i'm just happy we're able to have time to like organize our space around lately and be at home and just relax while doing it because things has been like all over the place since i've gotten sick so not sick from covid and again, you'll see that update on, you know, my first um, stream. It's now on video on demand in our YouTube channel if you um, care to watch it. But yeah, I'm going to need to cut this with something way stronger for sure. So let's see here. This tube does look good. I'm going to move this real quick here so you can see what I'm working on. There you go. I think that's better. I'm trying to think where do I have, because I don't want to use the, the um, rotary tool right now because it's going to have sparks and all that craziness. But these are built really strong. I'm trying to see if I can cut the wire.
I think for next week, I'm going to talk about safety equipment because a lot of the times, you know, people forget that just because you're making stuff doesn't mean that you'll neglect the safety part of it. So yeah, we're definitely going to talk about safety. Oh, this wire is rough. It's really not budging for me. So that's okay. But you kind of get the idea with these. Like, you're basically going to be stretched out like this. So once I separate these, let me see. So this is that aluminum bar that I was telling you guys about. I'm um, thinking about pre-bending this. These are really, really hard to bend. So, which is kind of a good thing because that means it's sturdy. And put a little bit of force and you will have like a curve kind of situation going on in here, which is awesome. So... Let's see. Let's try this guy. So I was debating at first, like, do I still need to use the pool noodle or do I just leave it alone? And I think with the pool noodle, it will add some more structure to it. Plus, it will look like it's illuminated if I didn't put lights in it. So there's that. If I stretch it out. It actually looks a lot like the tentacle that she has, which is pretty cool. I'm feeling a little bit of a weight on this, so I think I'm going to change the curve a little bit. Let me see. I'm going to bend it a little bit more here. Probably bend it like an S shape. I think that's good. Okay, let's see. So yeah, there it goes. Oh. Yeah, this is really heavy right now. But like I said before, you know, like once I have my backpack ready, this whole thing is going to be really sturdy. It's going to be like there like this. Looks like an elephant tusk or trunk. There you go. So it's going to look like that. And then I'm going to work on the tips of it. So I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to 3D print it. I think that is the best course of action is to 3D print it. But at the same time, it's like, it, it was like clear when I saw it in the movie. So we'll see. And of course, this is like hard to like go through since it's already like in here. You know, I'm gonna cut this in half. So I'm gonna end up cutting this like whole um, pool noodle anyway. Oh, I had to tell you, I did order a self healing mat from, shoot, I am drawing a blank right now. <laughs> This girl, I always I always watch her stuff like all the time. And then now I'm like drawing a blank. But anyway, I am going to do an unboxing once I get it. They finally shipped it out, but it's coming from China. So I don't know when on earth I'm gonna like get it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's gonna take a while for sure. I know this is a wire stripper, but I'm gonna try one more time. Cause I'm stubborn. Let's see. Do it like this. Yeah, no, this is a wire stripper. It does not do what it's what I want it to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this aside. All right, there you go. So let me go on ahead and cut this guy in half. My trusty yardstick in here to determine where the middle part is oh 
Okay, so about, I think around 19 will be fine. So around here, you will get my cutting apparatus. And the cutteratus. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna cut this guy in half. Yeah. And these are supposed to be light, and I just wanted to keep that structure and that like stretched out part as much as I can. So let me see. I want to, like, the idea was, like, hopefully this does work, but the idea was I was going to cut these into two-inch, um, what do you call it, like, two-inch segments. So, let's see. Okay. Thank God for cutting mats because it makes it so much easier to see where I'm cutting. And a lot of the times when I'm making stuff, I'm going to be honest, like I use my peripheral vision. It turns out okay. I'm not too worried about it. Oh yeah, I cut through here. And this doesn't need to be perfect. I'm telling you this because a lot of people are so bent up and so, I guess, like very wrapped up with the concept of everything has to be perfect with cosplay, which quite frankly, if it's something that people can't really see unless they like look inside or like if you're being judged in a craftsmanship competition, just don't worry about it. Like, don't stress yourself out. You don't need that additional stress in life. Just enjoy. Enjoy the moment and just enjoy cosplaying. Like, for real. There you go. Okay. My last slice. It's looking nice. And I kind of want to keep an allowance in between each one because I want to run wires in between. And basically what's going to happen is eventually I will insert lights into them. So it would look really nice. So since NWI is next month already, and I plan on wearing this at the event because I'm going to be a cosplay judge there. Uh, I might not be able to put the mechanics or the mechanical aspect to the claws, which is okay. There's a masking tape. I just bought a ton of masking tape and I'm looking for it. Um, but yeah, it basically, you know, it's going to be static. For the time being, but down the road, I'm definitely going to, um, down the road, I'm definitely going to, like, animate it with some servo. So, the plan that I have is to have kind of, like, a, the end of each tentacle to be detachable for both for traveling purposes and so that I can add the servo when it's time. So... I'm still trying to figure that stuff out, but don't worry. I, I kind of like have an idea on how to do it. I just want to go slow with it. Like the whole servo part, it doesn't seem to be that hard to do, but at the same time, like I don't want to waste material and mess stuff up at the same time. You know what I mean? So slow and steady goes. Um, and then... I have my Arduino stuff already. I have my servos already. So 
it's just a matter of assembling everything and programming it. So that's going to be for another day. So this is the third to the last um, session for the month. And then next month, I can't wait because it's another cosplay that I had to postpone last year. And I'm really excited to do the mood board for that. Um, but I'm trying to think whether or not I'm going to move forward with it for next month because it's on theme. So we'll see. Like, I'm sort of making good time with this build, but at the same time, I don't want to be too overconfident about it just because something always happens. Okay, let's see here. Let me do several increments of this. This is kind of like the idea that I have. It's just to have like a little bit of segments and remove some of this maybe. And of course, this is dollar store tape. So it's like already like disintegrating before I can even use the whole thing. I might just reserve this for painting or something because this is not really holding up the stuff and I kind of wanted to see a better I want to get a better picture of what it's gonna look like that way I'm not wasting my materials and having to cut and like oh I needed more of that sorry like kind of like moments here so yeah let's see Just gonna keep taping this. Okay, and I think I need to cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let me put this down real quick here so you can kind of see. A little sneak peek of what it's starting to look like. Man, I can't wait to add lights to this thing. And you know, like, I'm going to be honest, sometimes some cosplayers, they miss the point of this, not just about fun. If you don't need the more, uh, the most expensive materials to build stuff, you just need to be really creative and be imaginative. I use pool noodles on a lot of my props, and I don't really care. Because a lot of the times, people don't, don't really know that I'm using it. Um, there's this prop that I have over my head here. That one up there, it's actually made of a pool noodle. So, you know, like little stuff like that. Like, there's so much stuff you can use. You can't even tell until I, I tell you about it. So this is what the tentacle looks like. Yay! All right, now we're going to insert this thing, and I hope it works, and I think it will. It's kind of like putting this thing. Please work. Oh. I noticed I did, like, leave that space at the end there. That's going to be for the end of the, um, what do you call this? The arm. Oh boy, I'm having a hard time putting this in. I was afraid of that, but you know, part of it too is because these are just masking taped in. They're not really um, in there like permanently. So let's try the other end. Try the other end. Oh my gosh, I just remembered something. So 
there was one time, okay, I'm not going to name names, um, there were like, these people were like, oh my gosh, this person's totally copying all of my, my cosplays. I wish cosplayers, like, would stop having that mindset because, quite honestly, we're a lot of, like, the same characters, right? That being said, you know, sometimes we, there will be a time where we all have the same cosplay character. We cosplay the same character. Oh, it didn't really hold up, but that's okay. But yeah, like, I just wish like people would be a lot more open about that idea that yeah, if you're cosplaying the same character, if that person cosplaying the same character as your as what you have cosplayed in the past or that you're currently cosplaying, guess what? It's a better idea to actually be friends with that cosplayer because you have the same favorite character. That's what it is. That's what's up. There's no ulterior motive. There's no you know, there's no, oh, well, she's just, just copying me. No, you you both like the same character. Nine, Probably 90% of the time, 80% of the time, that is the case. Like, give people a benefit of the doubt. And since you both like the same characters, or character or characters, that means you have a lot in common. So guess what? Maybe you be besties or something, you know? Just saying. Like, not everything is about copying or trying to one-up each other, you know? Sometimes people just genuinely like that character just as much as you do. So, you know, maybe try talking to that person because you have something in common already. And, you know, I, I kind of feel sad sometimes as people say, oh, I don't have a squad. I don't have a squad when I cosplay guess what? You could have had a squad if you find people who like similar stuff as you. Which, that's what I love about cosplaying in the first place because I finally found a group of people that actually like the same stuff as me. Because growing up, nobody really understood why I liked Ninja Turtles over Barbie. Or, you know, I mean, I liked My Little Pony. Don't get me wrong. Um, I read the Barbie comics because that was the only thing I was technically allowed to buy when I was a kid. But you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I found a lot of people, women in general, who like the same stuff that I did. So that's how I met a lot of my friends and I've kept a lot of the same friends in cosplay. So we just like the same stuff together. And you know what's cool about that? Because of that because we do like the same characters um i'm gonna tell you so my friend char we've been friends since man for years now we've both been cosplaying but i've always asked her hey is it cool if i cosplay some of the characters that we've already cosplayed and she would always tell me this i don't own that character you can go on ahead and cosplay it if you like. I'm not going to get a, in the way of your happiness. That's how cool she is, okay? So that's why we've remained friends for a long time. There's no freaking drama with this girl, okay? It's just all love. All love. All positivity. So I wish a lot more people would be like that. But, you know, it will happen. I'm confident it will happen. But yeah, that's kind of like one of the things I like about my friends in the community. It's like, like I said, you know, like, hey, you want to cosplay this character that I already cosplayed and I love cosplaying? Guess what? You can cosplay it if you want. It's fine. I don't care. I don't really care. You both have your own different versions of that cosplay, you know, or it could be the same, but... The idea is you both like the same character and you're both passionate about the same character. Um, her and I, I think the most common cosplay that we both have done would probably be Princess Jasmine. Like she's done a version of Princess Jasmine and I've done my own version of Princess Jasmine. And you know what? When that live action 
Aladdin like came out. Char and I, we actually dressed up in like civilian clothes that are Princess Jasmine, like inspired by Princess Jasmine. And we had a blast. We had a blast watching that movie because we were wearing Princess Jasmine clothes. We were on, you know, we understood the assignment. We showed up looking like Princess Jasmine's, <laughs> like in civilian clothes. But yeah, you get it. All right, this is taped a little bit better. So I'm hoping this works this time. I'm sorry, that was really close to the camera, was it? All right, so let's try it again. One more time. One more time. All right. And I keep giving shout out to my BFF Char. Please follow her at Char Star Cosplay, by the way. She's absolutely amazing. She is an angel. And she is a huge My Little Pony um, cosplayer. So definitely check out her work. She likes villains as much as I do. It's another thing that we have in common. Very goth. Very, very villainous. She's probably one of the biggest Disney nerds that I know. And I absolutely love it. I love her love of Disney. Oh, look at that. Tentacle. So you can see that green stuff. Well, imagine that if there were lights in the middle. If you're just tuning in, by the way, <laughs> hi, I'm Monica from Geeks of Go Go. I can't see who's online with me right now, but I am building Doc Ock cosplay and this is part of the tentacle build so this contraption here is one of the tentacles and i'm testing it's technically a pool noodle yes it is um an aluminum bar and some clear air duct and then after that i'm going to put my electronics in um so masking tape is not the final plan of holding these pool noodles together in this contraption what I'm actually going to end up doing is I had my husband go to the hardware store today. God bless him for getting my my supplies for me <laughs> during these crazy times. Um, but basically, I'm going to be putting um, I'm going to be running a wire in between these, and the wires will have the aquarium tubing that would actually space these um what do you call this these pool noodles evenly so they're going to be spaced out really nice and that way when i do this when i put them in the tubes they're not only going to be detachable they're actually also going to be sturdy when i do that um pool noodles are very yeah they're they're very light they are very resilient um a little worried about the whole wear and tear part but i kind of like figured that out as well because i found guess what they have clear duct tape so i'm going to be using clear duct tape and it's gorilla gorilla brand, bleh, gorilla brand clear duct tape <laughs> i feel like a commercial anyhow yeah so that's what i'm going to be using to secure all of the wires in which is going to be really cool um the lights should be really easy to put um i should say relatively easy mm -hmm. i i shouldn't brag about oh it's so easy but yeah um i'm doing a lot of shortcuts like i said because i don't want to stress myself out with this cosplay i just enjoy the process of like creating it um but yeah so that's what's going to happen with these so this is one of four looks like a bunch of marshmallows like green marshmallows on a stick right but yeah that's what's gonna happen with that and then these two beans I'm gonna need to buy another one because I only bought one um, what ended up happening was the first one that I bought they were too big and they couldn't fit this this thing here so it wasn't a through a true four inch uh what do you call this it wasn't a true four inch um width um for for the inside of the tube but this one is a, a three let's measure this i'm curious now are you three inches yeah it's three inches the other one was like 
a little bit more than four, I feel like. But yeah, this fits perfectly in here. And I, I'm just excited to just put this thing together. Um, I think the next step this week is I'm going to have my dress form down here and then um, work on the backpack. So you already saw that plastic stuff that I have, like these trays. Um, I'm doubling up just to keep them sturdy. And on top of that, gosh, I am just so excited for this. So Bill will print me two more of those, um, those files that I made um, on Tinkercad. Um, and then this is, this is my backpack here. And this is going to go to my back. Maybe I, I will leave the foot for two of these. They basically go around my back. So, yeah, I might just do that. Because it's about the size of my waist here, I think. Yeah, it's actually, look at that. Can't really see it, but, you know, I'll take pictures. But, yeah, it's perfect. So I might just keep those and probably put handles on those and then just cut for this one. Oh, thank you. I got my aquarium hose here. I think this is 10 feet, 10 feet of hose. All right, let's see. Okay, I might just 3D print something to go underneath it, like some sort of like, um, I want to say dish. Because that's kind of like what it looks like. But it's going to be holding up these pool noodles. So it's like a circle thing. I, I can even do it with foam, to be honest. I mean, not everything has to be 3D printed. So yeah, you can just like put like kind of like a, a plate here and then put another ring. And that will hold it in place. And then this will be kind of like my divider for it. And then... I'm debating whether or not I was going to do L wire or L tape, sorry, or um, LED lights because LED lights, they're like really thick. And I'm, I know for a fact that this type of thing, like it's clear, it's not going to diffuse the light. Like you can really see the LED lights, but if you have L wire, it might have a better effect, which I'm kind of like really intrigued to try. I might just do hmm so yeah a lot of good ideas when I keep creating and I'm just so inspired I'm so inspired with all of my friends like making stuff but yeah here's prototype arm number one um but yeah the space I'm probably gonna have like an L bracket attach the um what do you call this L bracket to attach the the claws to the arm i am really excited for that part you have no idea how excited i am for that you know what the trick is like to make sure it's not heavy to like weigh this down because that would be a bummer um i did ask my husband to buy um i believe like eight of these and i think he was only able to acquire six which is fine because this is my extra this is my extra aluminum one. Um, so I should be able to like, if I double, if I need to double up on these, I think I'll be fine. So yeah. So anyhow, it is 837. I really appreciate you for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching my live stream today. And I can't wait to just finish this project and just show everyone what it's about. Now that I've made a mess. <laughs> I, um, I thank you um, for watching, and I will see you on the next one. So the ne next one will be on Wednesday next week because we have D&D on Monday. And, yeah, I'll have a brand new topic to talk about. So, yeah, thank you, and good night. I'll see you. Bye.